Hello, my name is Ivanka Menken and thank you for watching this video. I know you signed up for the cloud computing introduction videos and after this short personal message, I'm going to show you a PowerPoint presentation on the introduction into cloud computing. So I will mention all this stuff in the, in the PowerPoint presentation, but um, I'm going to do four videos as a generic general intro into cloud computing and the reason why service management is so relevant in cloud computing services. Um, yeah, and in addition to that, feel free to look around in our online store or ask me questions, send me emails and we will answer all your questions in relation to cloud computing or any other e-learning requirements that you have. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video series. Thank you. Bye. So here we go. Cloud computing introduction. A short introduction into cloud computing and why service management is still relevant or maybe even more relevant these days in a cloud computing environment. First of all, what is cloud computing? A lot of people are talking about cloud computing all the time and it has been around for years and years and years and years and everybody is confused about what cloud computing is. At the crux of it, cloud computing is the ability for you to scale on demand and not have to worry. I know that's not a very technical description of what cloud computing is, but ultimately that's what it comes down to. There are service providers that have mega data centers and they perform IT services on your behalf. You subscribe to them, whether it's a software application or it is data storage or processing capabilities. It's all about the services that are delivered to you, the client. So if we take it from the top, there are four deployment methods. Generically, I mean, there's a little bit more, but because they're all mixed together, but Basically, there's the public cloud, private cloud, a hybrid between the two, and there's a community cloud. So that's where all your crowdsourcing and stuff. So the three service models in there is your software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. And then each of those service provisions have essential characteristics. So if you combine all these deployment methods together, you can have a look at which part of our IT, which part of our IT services, which part of our IT infrastructure do we need to keep in sourced? Like what is so proprietary, what must stay internal? So from those, um, for those data or that data or those services, you may consider a private cloud solution. But if you have information or data that can be outsourced or the services around that can be outsourced, that's when you're talking about public clouds and or community clouds. And of course, you can create a hybrid between the two. Whichever one you choose, the essential characteristics of all these types of cloud services is the fact that it's a pooling of resources. So it is resources being pulled together to get your econ uh, economy of scale and there you have your broad network access there's rapid elasticity you can measure the services all the services are measured so you can get your kpis and your return on investment and most of these services are based on on-demand delivery and or a self-service component and then when you look at all the four letter acronyms within cloud computing, I even heard somebody say the other day, it's an everything as a service, service provision. So it, it really doesn't matter what you do. It's, it's a train of thought. It's a way of looking at it. Do you provide this as a service or do you provide the products that support the service? What is it that you do? So the SaaS, software as a service, PaaS, platform as a service, um, those services can be sold to clients. You can subscribe to those services. All that is part of a cloud delivery. So the reasoning why you would purchase or subscribe to cloud computing could be a financial, could be that your competitive advantage is purely based on a financial advantage or 
there could be some technological advantages that you can utilize. So the emerging technology, the fact that as a smaller organization, for instance, you have the ability to have access to technology that is normally only available to large enterprises. Then there's the sharing of the resources, which could be an innovation or an en environmental um, reasoning. And then internally, the risk mitigation structure behind cloud computing. So you don't have all your eggs in one basket. You transfer some of the risk of maintaining and managing some of that infrastructure. And of course, usually it's a mix of all of these four components. But irrespective of the reasoning for cloud computing, irrespective of the type of cloud computing services that you choose, it all comes down to the fact that you still need to manage your IT services. So what is your organization? What do you want to achieve? What processes do you have in place? And what processes do you need to still have in place to manage your services to the standards that you want to manage them? So don't drop the ball. Don't just think, oh, you know, it's cloud computing. I don't have to worry about this anymore. You do. You do have to worry about it, about this. So don't forget about your service management because ultimately your high level relationships still flow down from the business via the business processes into the IT organization and ultimately with the cloud services that you subscribe to. The other way around, if you are a cloud provider, your cloud services are of the core of the services you provide as a business. So the relationship is even more stronger. This, well, I was going to say little Venn diagram, but it's not a little Venn diagram. This Venn diagram really gives a good overview of the differences between grid utility computing, where visualiza a virtualization fits in, and what service oriented architecture, which has been around for years and years and years and years, how does that fit in with software as a service and other cloud based services? I talked about service management before, and I talked about m risk mitigation before. Service level management, the management of your service levels, the management of your service portfolio, your catalog is important, remains to be important, and is probably even more important than ever before, because as a service provider, if you provide services via a SaaS model or a PaaS model currently, you no longer have a one-to-one -one relationship with your client, you have a one-to-many. That same service, purely because of the pulling of resources and the multi-tenancy of servers and other pieces of hardware equipment, you will have a one-to-many relationship. So the mitigation and the management and analysis of risk and the impact on your, on your organization will be a lot stronger. So keep that in mind. Again, this is basic service management, but you need to understand how these strategies impact the delivery of cloud services. So that's why as out of service, because most of our courses are all around service management. So our cloud computing certification scheme is completely technology independent. It's all about how to manage services in the cloud. If you are an IT provider for your company, an internal IT provider, how can you deliver your IT services to your clients utilizing the cloud? Irrespective of the type of cloud services that you sign up for, irrespective of the technology choices that you make. So that's the first one. The first in a series of four short presentations. I mean, it's eight minutes, so it's really, really short. And it will give you a high level overview of cloud computing, managing services in the cloud. And then next time we'll talk a bit more in specific on virtualization and software as a service and how they work together. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed these little snippets of information. And as I said in the introduction, feel free to send us emails with all your questions about cloud computing and we'll answer them. Talk to you soon. Bye.